Hello, I'm Scott with Sound Photography, and today I'm going to talk about a little uh, an update on the drop ND filter for the Canon EOS R. So, as I said in the video, I ordered one. I got it in last week. I instantly returned it. It went back the next day. I probably should have made a video on it, but I just as soon as I got done with it, I shoved it back in the freaking box and had it set up to have the mail guy pick it up the next day. So when I got it, I went across the park to cross the street to the park, take some pictures. And you lose a stop of light automatically with it on. So there's one stop of light you automatically lose. And now you can buy the clear one to drop in there and you won't lose that stop of light. But why should I spend an extra almost $200 for something that should have came with it in the first place. Another thing is, so I got my shot set up and I put my camera on the spider holster. I went to adjust things and I went to pick up my camera again and then I looked, went to take the shot and it was different. The exposure changed because I bumped the ND filter and it changed it to a different stop. That's another reason why I do not like veritable ND filters. Now, if you're a videographer, I can understand why you would want a veritable ND filter. But when you're shooting photography, it's best to have set settings. That's why I use an ND16, which is a four stop filter in full sun, not in shade, in full sun. In California, in the middle of the desert, at high noon, should be using a five stop filter, but I use a four stop filter because I can jump from ISO 100 to ISO 50 to give me that extra stop because I'd rather go down in ISO and then instead of up in ISO just because of noise, which you're not going to get much noise between those two little stops, but it's just what I the way I think. Veritable filters can adjust at any time and then all of a sudden you go to take your pictures and you import them into your camera and then all of a sudden this one's this one's bright, this one's dark, this one's bright, this one's dark, 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 bright, 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 dark, bright, bright. Where's the consistency in that? That's why I use a prime ND filter. I don't have to worry about it. It's set. It's done. Just like when you set your ISO, you set your shutter speed, and you set your uh, aperture, they're set. They don't get changed. Same like a prime. It doesn't get changed. Either if you want to zoom in on something, you walk in onto your subject. If you want to zoom out, you walk away from your subject. It's, it's a set setting. That's the reason why prime lenses are sharper than zoom lenses. That's, you get more consistency from a prime ND filter than you will with a veritable filter. Now, if you're a videographer, I can understand that, changing on the fly, stuff like that. But until Canon sets up some kind of locking system for that ND filter, it's not gonna be for me. Because I rather stick with a prime ND filter and again, the headaches that I'm not going to have from having a prime ND filter compared to a variable filter that moves on me on accident. If I accidentally bump it, I accidentally grab the camera wrong and all of a sudden it brushes up against my, my shirt and then changes the ND or changes the, the output. And then all of a sudden now I have inconsistent images. Again, this is my little update why I sent back the drop ND filter for Canon. Again, I think they should give you the the clear filter for free with that because if you're paying $400, they should give you a little bit more than just one little veritable ND filter and a mount. Again, this is my two cents. My name is Scott with Sean's Photography and thank you for watching.